Like these three specific really common diet strategies that you should avoid by all costs. Because if you don't avoid these, you will just say your chances of losing the weight drop tremendously. If you stay or do what I call camping out in your calorie deficit for too long, there's a couple of things that happen. This is why if you have a bad relationship with food where you literally can't have just one, all of our focus should go be to fixing the relationship with the food versus let's go to fat loss. What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Dieting from the Inside Out because we all know you have to diet from the inside out first before you diet for real. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you the three diet strategies you must avoid by all costs if you want to keep your weight off forever, okay? Um, I haven't done an episode quite like this in a minute. Like a lot of my episodes have been a little bit more like, here's how to stop binge eating or here's this hyper-focused thing. But in today's episode, I, I want to come at you a little bit differently and talk to you about like these three specific really common diet strategies that you should avoid by all costs. Because if you don't avoid these, you will just say your chances of uh, losing the weight drop tremendously. Um, and if you manage to get your weight off, it, it, you're going to have a hard time keeping it off if you avoid these. Okay. So, um, but before we get into all those, be sure and subscribe to the show if you have not already. And my biggest ask, please, my later, I'm telling you, if you get any value out of my show whatsoever, all I'm asking is you go review the episode down below, wherever you're listening to it, Apple, Spotify, wherever. I know, I'm not sure if all platforms let you review and, and write a review and whatnot, but it would mean the world to me if we could get some higher or more, more reviews, higher reviews. If we could get more reviews, if you find value in the show and you haven't submitted a review below, it means the world to me. So if you think my show sucks, don't do it. But I'm guessing if you're listening to this, you don't think my show sucks. So that's all I ask. Um, otherwise, let's get into all the goods. So, um, with these specific diet strategies, the heart the, the 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 problem is with these is they're really common, right? Like like uh, my hope is is that like you wouldn't be doing these, but unfortunately, because of the diet culture is the way it is, and because the landscape is how it is, and the the unfortunate part of all of this stuff is that a lot, a lot of these are really normal. So we're gonna get into each of them. I just have a few notes here on my phone to keep me on on point. So um, strategy number one that you need to avoid is spending too long in your deficit. Now, I recently did a post about this from another podcast that I did talking about this, and it went viral, at least viral for me on my TikTok um, for all the wrong reasons. Um, I'm actually shocked that this is such a controversial thing because let me say this, because a lot of times people hear this and they think they're like, wait, Jared, I thought calorie deficits what mattered for weight loss. And, and what you're saying, that, that violates the laws of thermodynamics. It, it doesn't at all. Because there are a few reasons that you would not want to stay in your calorie deficit for a crazy extended period of time. And let me just say this. You have to spend a good amount of time in your calorie deficit. But a lot of the people that I talk to, a lot of the people in my Facebook group, a lot of people that are on my, my email list and that, that talk with me regularly, they are in their calorie deficits for six, eight 12, 18 months straight, or at least they think they are, but that's half the problem because if you stay or do what I call camping out in your calorie deficit for too long, there's a couple of things that happen. Um, psychologically, it leads to massive burnout, right? Imagine this, imagine you, whatever you do for work, imagine you never get time off. Imagine you work 12 hour days, seven days a week for months and months and months and months and months on end. This is when a lot of people think they're eating in their calories and they're not because things start to fall off. You, it's, it's just, it's, it's impossible for most people to avoid burnout because you're in a negative energy balance. You are burning more calories than what you're consuming, consuming. So it is not the optimal state for you to be productive in and things like that. This is where some people call, call, talk about the diet brain kicks in where all of a sudden you're like a little more spacey in these kind of things. It's not that you're dieting wrong. It's that we are spending too much time in it and not coming up for air or we are not coming out of our deficit strategically and periodically. Okay. What I mean by that is, is a lot of times when we live in a deficit too long, um, like a, there, there's the psychological side where a lot of people will think they're eating their numbers and they're just, we'll just be honest. They're not because they're getting tired of being in their calories for too or in their deficit for too long. They're camping out there. They are, um, they're starting to feel the effects of dieting long-term. And then that's when they start going from tracking their calories really specifically to rounding them or to getting the three or four workouts in, in a week to, 
maybe one or two skipping weeks at a time or getting more licks, tastes, and bites of things that aren't logged. Whereas a lot of times people will start to fall off. They'll, 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 they'll mess up and they go off. Oh, fuck it. I'll start over Monday. But it's because we keep trying to go back into staying this prolonged state of a calorie deficit versus you need like your own little vacation, <laughs> Right. Imagine if you never got a day off or you never got a vacation, you just work 12 hour shifts every single day, you would burn out. Well, you can also burn out with being in a calorie deficit too long. It is taxing over time. Okay. So there's that side of it. But then there's the, this is the side that everyone on TikTok got pissed off at last time. And it is that over time, spending a consistent peer amount of time, I would argue too much in your calorie deficit will cause you to down regulate over time. This is what people confuse by starvation mode. Cause here's the, the reality. Starvation mode doesn't exist. The concept of somehow your body takes nothing and stores it as fat because it thinks it's in a cave dying somewhere is absurd, but your body is an adaptation machine. Okay. So what I mean by that is what happens is if you've, let's say you, let's say you're, you're, you think 1200 calories is it for you. So you eat 1200 calories a day and you, and you actually do you're, you track to, to the gram, you are dialed in and you still cannot lose no matter what you do. Well, this may be a sign that you spent too much time in your calorie deficit and your metabolism and body started to adapt and downregulate. So what happens when this goes on is again, your body just adapts to whatever stimulus or lack thereof that's going on. So if you are spending way too much time in a calorie deficit, you will start to uh, drop what's called your NEAT calories, N-E-A-T. So NEAT stands for non exercise activity thermogenesis. It's basically sciencey talk for the amount of calories your body burns, just not in exercise while you're just keeping the lights on, right? Fidgeting, blinking, doing your normal day to day, your normal amounts of energy, making coffee, going to the mailbox, all of these things, fidgeting. I think I mentioned that your neat calories drop but your neat calories take up most of your calorie intake per day. Your there's there's it's, it's the majority of the calories that you spend because you spend more of your day not exercising than exercising. But if you spend too much time in a calorie deficit, your metabolism will downregulate. This is not outside the laws of thermodynamics. This is not fat storing mode from starvation. This is literally your body normally burning just arbitrary numbers, 2000 calories a day. And now over time, your body burns 1700 calories per day and then 1600 calories per day, then 1500 calories per day. That's all it is. Because again, last time I talked about this, people got bent on a shape of like, no calorie deficit always works. And I agree with you. But if your total daily energy that you are expending drops. Like if you, let's say you, your maintenance is 2000 calories a day and you eat 1600 calories per day, you're in a deficit, you'll lose weight. But then all of a sudden, if you stop losing weight at 1600 calories and you've been eating in your calorie deficit for the last six months and you still can't lose weight, more than likely your maintenance because of these adaptations dropped for whatever reason, for example, it could be your neat calories dropped. You fidget less, you have less energy, so you burn more, or, I'm sorry, you burn less calories per day. Or let's say you ate in a deficit for too long and now you don't have as much muscle tissue on your person. Muscle tissue is metabolically active, so you are burning less calories, right? These kind of things. This is all that's happening. It's not starvation mode. It's not anything outside the laws of thermodynamics. It is the fact that you're just burning less because you're spending too much time in a deficit. Or it could be a combination of them both. The psychological side where you're just getting lots of burnout, so you're eating more than what you think because you're you're not as, as on point as you were when you started. And a combination of you've been calorically depleted for a long time. It could be both, right? But this is why one of the worst diet strategies is literally camping out in your calories, in your calorie deficit, till all the weight comes off or for too long. Because this also does this, this is getting a little bit deeper. This also causes a lot of people to have a bad relationship with, with dieting or not dieting, where I know the amount of people that I coach who, when we do their first maintenance break, there's so much panic. There's so much worry. There's so much fear around, well, what happens if I'm not dieting? So if you camp out in your calorie deficit for months and 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 years where you are always trying to lose weight and you never come up for air then you are setting yourself up for failure because you're going to panic more than likely when you come out of it. 
It's one of the worst things that can happen. Forget the, forget the adaptation, forget the downregulating of a metabolism, forget the burnout for no other reason is you need to toe tap the water for maintenance. Think of it this way. Uh, this is a, a thing that I tell clients a lot. If you're scared to go maintenance for just, I don't know, like three months, how do you plan on keeping the weight off once you're done losing the weight? You lose the 50 pounds. You have no reason to diet anymore. So you have to come out to maintenance. But if you've never gone through maintenance, it's going to be terrifying. All you're going to do is see like, oh my gosh, I finally made it. I'm going to mess up the success I have. That's what happens. Because this is why I see this a lot when uh, in, inside coaching. Because um, again, most people, just full transparency, most people who think they're all the way uh, adapt, or adapted down or downregulated their metabolism, um, it's not as, as prominent. Most people eat more than what they think. That's the truth. Most people who are like, Jared, I'm eating 1,200 calories and I can't lose weight aren't eating 1,200 calories. They're way overeating. They're overestimating or they're, uh, they're, they're making the wrong decisions or they're, they're not tracking everything or they don't track their fall off days or whatever the case may be. But I've been doing this game long enough where I have people who come into my coaching program or into the collective and they, I literally have them dial everything in and to get like a baseline and they are legitimately eating 1200 calories a day, 1300 calories a day with zero progress. They weigh everything. And it's all damn near perfect. And then as soon as we start to increase these things, fat loss starts to happen and the exact reverse diet maintenance process starts to happen. And it's a beautiful thing. So this is why one of the worst diet strategies is to stay in this deficit calorically depleted for months and months and months and months and months and months on end. Now, right about now, people usually say, okay, Jared, when do I come out? How frequently? This is still an individualized thing, but my generalized answer is you should come out every few months or so, or when you start to actually plateau. Now, don't get me wrong. Plateaus are a different conversation, but, um, if it's in the case with most people I'm working with, because again, most people I work with is women who have generally speaking, a lower calorie intake than men we don't have as much wiggle room. So where there are some men who have a much higher calorie intake, we might be able to drop their calories two or three times based on their progression versus if a calorie intake is already lower, if you're eating 1400 calories a day and that's legitimately what you should be eating or 1600 calories a day and that's what you should be eating, we just can't keep dropping. This is why a lot of the people that I work with who have a lower calorie intake just because the nature of their genetics or what have you, I'm a bigger fan of that. We plateau instead of dropping more, we plateau. I go back up to maintenance, chill out there, drop below or drop more, lose body fat. All the things happen. We plateau again. We go back to maintenance. So instead of drop, 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 find the fucking floor. We drop maintenance, drop maintenance, drop maintenance. That's just my general, like you do whatever you want to do. That's just what I found that works the best with the population that I work the most of the time, most amount of time with. Okay. Um, so that is, Diet strategy number one you should avoid is just spending too much time calorically depleted in, in a calorie deficit and scared to come out. Come out for maintenance breaks for whatever reason. If you want to have more calories to go do that family trip with, do it. If you're just tired of dieting, want a little bit of a break, come out of that calorie deficit for whatever period of time. Or if you've been literally in your calorie deficit for as long as you can remember and you just can't be consistent, maybe it's because you eat too little and you don't come out of your calorie deficit enough. Okay. Again, this is not violating the laws of physics. This is, this is quite in line with it. So I hope this makes more sense this time. Number two, diet strategy. Number two, you should avoid cutting out your favorite foods because you can't have just one. Here's the problem. This is the nuance of, of your relationship with food. Um, one of the things that I hear the most is, Oh, Jared, I can't have just one. So I don't have any at all, or it's easier just to cut them out of my life cut out the Oreos for my life because I can't have just one. Okay, here's the problem. You are perpetuating the issue. You are enabling the issue. This is why if you have a bad relationship with food where you literally can't have just one, all of our focus should go be to fixing the relationship with the food versus let's go to fat loss. Because if you have a bad relationship with food and you go ahead and let's just go jump right into fat loss, and then this is when people will finally make it. Then they go back to like, all right, I deserve it. I'm going to have my Oreos again. And then that was the hair that broke the camel's back. And they started binge eating and they gained all their weight back. This is why the whole premise of my show, diet from the inside out first, before you diet for real, is it fixes this. Because if you can't have just one, I get it. I used to be in the same shoes as you, respect. 
but we have to fix that. We have to address that first. Your relationship with food and healing it is one of the most tactical things you can do for your fat loss goals above anything else. Because if you have a horrible relationship with food, you can't do, it's, I'm going to say you can't, it's very difficult to do the one thing that matters most in fat loss, which is being a calorie deficit. Because if you, when you have a bad relationship with food, it causes all the food noise. When you have a bad relationship with food, it causes restriction. That restriction causes the binge. Then you're in the cycle, which causes you to say, fuck it, I can't take this anymore. But when you have a great relationship with food, you can have all the self-control in the world, all the mental stress and noise and anger and frustration and overwhelm and obsessiveness goes away. No food is good, bad, indifferent. There's no moral value to food. And you have all the self-control in the world you want. So it's not that big of a deal to stay in your calorie deficit. It's why your relationship with food is one of the most important things you can do. It's also why it's one of the first things that I like to fix with people when they come into either of my programs inside the collective or inside one-on-one. -on -one, it's the very first stage in my coaching program. It's called dieting from the inside out. Like literally, that's why the name of the show is dieting from the inside out. The very first stage of my coaching program is called dieting from the inside out because nothing else matters if you don't fix your inner game, which includes your relationship with food. Okay. So, but again, cutting out your favorite foods, um, because you can't have just one is, is again, I, I understand the intention. I get it. But we need to fix that relationship with food first because you have to understand this. It's just going to get worse. If, you're, if you, you feel like once I start, I cannot stop and you have a bad relationship with food, it's only going to get worse. And then the more success you have, the more weight you lose in spite of that, it's going to cause you to be more depleted, more restricted, more deprived. And then one thing's going to lead to the other, and then it's going to keep happening. And it's like any other bad pattern is the longer it lives, the worse it gets. The longer the, the longer you struggle, the stronger the struggle gets. Um, I'll be honest. I've been doing this for a long enough time. It will be it come your Achilles heel where it's like, man, I can do everything right, but this is my one thing I just can't do. And it will be the, the downfall of every time you try to have a transformation. Because I bet you can do well for a while while there's no Oreos in the house, while there's no candy, while there's no whatever. But if you feel like you just have one bite and it's like this animal turns on inside of you that you cannot stop and you just wake up and pizza crusts are everywhere and you just like, I don't know what happened. I was doing so good. And you almost go like on autopilot and eat this stuff. It's only going to get worse the longer you perpetuate it, the longer you you keep going because you know what happens? Why they call it the restrict binge cycle is because you go, oh, I can't have just one. I restrict all of it then that restriction lasts just for a little bit. Then you binge. Then because you binged, you go, oh, I'm going to get back on track. Restrict again. Then you're, all right, fuck. I, I want a little bit of it. Binge, restrict, restrict, binge. And it keeps going and going and going and going. And it will literally cause most people to take their struggles to their grave. Because you can't, like, you know the old saying, you can't outwork a bad diet. It's true. But you can't out diet a messed up inner game. Does that make sense? Uh, that's funny. My dog, literally, if you're watching the video laid between my two tripods perfectly right now, I got a little worried. Uh, she, I have two cameras rolling right now and she laid down and I thought she was going to knock a camera over, but she laid right between the two tripods. So the cameras shake because it's probably cause she got up, but you see what I'm saying though, is you can't outwork a bad diet, but you can't out diet a messed up inner game. You can't out calorie deficit, a bad relationship with food. You can't out calorie deficit, bad emotional regulation where you run to food every time you have a negative feeling. You can't out diet subconscious self-sabotage because you're on autopilot 90% of the day. You can't out diet your bad relationship with yourself. I'm telling you, you can't outwork a bad diet. You can't out diet a messed up inner game, which is why the number two for this is one of the worst ways to, to diet strategies. Just, just, just cut out your favorite food because you can't handle it. Versus if you can't, maybe that's your sign is like, oh, maybe I should focus on this first. Maybe work with someone who specializes in this. Maybe we get professional help around it, right? Again, it's one of the first things I teach my clients is how to fix their relationship with food. Because I know nothing else matters if we don't fix that. No diet strategy is going to last worth anything if they're continuously binge eating and once they start, they can't stop. So for you listening to this, if that's you, well, number one, I have other podcast episodes on how to fix your relationship with food. So if you would like to listen to those, go scroll back or shoot me a message. And I'll be happy to send them to you. Or you should maybe see about enrolling in coaching or the collective so we can stop this with you. And then you'll be well on your way to losing fat and keeping it off in no time. Okay. And then number three for the, the worst diet one is 
Wow, words are hard. The number three for the uh, for terrible diet strategies that need to be avoided is just keep doing more. Um, because whenever I was coming up with this list, I was I don't want to just give the same shit that everyone else talks about. I don't want to be you know just be like oh avoid trendy diets or let's sustainability. Which again, that's right. That's that's absolutely perfect. But I'm assuming by this point you may already know a lot of that, and I'm I want to take this a little bit of a different angle. So one of the worst diet strategies is just keep doing more. Just keep adding more because it's not working. Add more. Um, aren't where you want to be? Add more. Um, what I mean by that is things like, let's say fat loss isn't happening for you or it's taking too long or you're getting impatient or you're getting frustrated, what have you. And you just go, all right, well, we're just going to add more cat, more cardio or just more workouts or just be more aggressive. Be more restrictive with your, with your meals. Be in more of a deficit. Do more things. Add more habits. That rarely works. The way that I coach, we actually go less. My goal when I work with someone is to get away with doing the least amount of things possible to have the max amount of benefit. Because just because you could add more doesn't mean you should add more. Because the other thing that happens that people don't talk about is like, yeah, you could add more cardio. You could add more workouts. You could add more of a deficit. You could be more aggressive. You could be more restrictive. But that also causes more fall off, more failure, more fuck it mentality, more issues with adherence, more whoops, more of all these things. So it's not always more equals better. It's kind of like if a birthday cake recipe calls for bake it 400 degrees for 40 minutes, you can't just ramp the heat up to 800 degrees for 20 minutes and expect the same product. It doesn't work like that. So if you started with one or two habits, or let's say a small calorie deficit, and you lost 10 pounds, that doesn't mean you should just double it and jump to this crazy aggressive plan and expect more results either, because there's more nuance to this. The way that I explain it is, um, I drive a pretty fast car. Um, let's just say my car goes 200 miles an hour, okay? Well, the speed limit around my house is 30 miles an hour. And if I wanna get to the grocery store, if from my house, it's let's say 10 minutes to the grocery store driving 10 miles or driving 30 miles an hour, but my car is a sports car and it goes 200 miles an hour. So would it be a good idea to do more speed? Because if I go, you know, hundred miles an hour, 200 miles an hour to the grocery store, will I get there faster? Well, well, yes, in theory on paper, but in practicality, what's actually going to happen? I'm going to get pulled over. I'm going to get taken to jail. I'm going to run over a kid because there's a school zone. I'm going to get in a car accident. I might die, uh, but I'm at least definitely getting pulled over and going to jail. So in theory, does would me adding more speed get me to the grocery store faster? In theory, on paper, yes, because 200 miles an hour is faster than my car. Is, I'm sorry, because 200 miles an hour is faster than 30. But in practicality, it's also going to raise all the other issues. I'm going to get pulled over, get in a car accident, all those things, inevitably slowing me down. It's no different for you trying to add more because you're frustrated or more because you're impatient or more because you're getting jealous because Karen lost more weight than you did at the office or anything like that. On paper, it might make sense, but in practicality, it doesn't work like that. So which is why one of the third worst dieting strategy that you need to avoid is always adding more. If anything, if you're having trouble with consistency, if you're having trouble with falling off, if you're having trouble with staying on the plan or you're having trouble staying motivated, we actually should dial the plan back. It's just like with a dumbbell. If I can't pick up a 30, well, that means it's too heavy. I need to go down to a 20 until I'm strong enough to get to the 30. It's the same thing with this stuff. If you are having trouble staying in the game, being consistent, being bought in, all these things with a plan that is, let's say, three habits, Maybe we should drop down to two habits until our consistency gets high enough or our showing up gets high enough or whatever you want to call it to where we can go then up to three things. But at the end of the day, more does not equal better. Rarely is that the case. So um, otherwise, that is it, my friends. That is it for uh, the three dieting strategies that you should avoid by all costs. Um, we'll recap real quick. Number one is spending too long in your calorie deficit and never coming out. Number two is cutting out all your favorite foods because you can't have just one. And number three is just doing more and more and more and more. So that is it, my friends, for today's episode of Dieting from the Inside Out. Again, if you have not yet subscribed or left the show a review, it would mean so much to me. I put so much time, energy, effort, and money into this thing, and I really, really want this to be great. And the more 
you subscribe, the more uh, the more we climb the, the rankings and the more reviews you leave, the better that goes as well. So it would mean a ton to me. Um, also, before you go, I have a lot of things in the description for you, okay? So if you go to the, to the description, depending on where you're at in this journey, I have a lot of things. Number one, I have all my other socials if you haven't connected with me there, like my Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all that. Also, if you, uh, let's say are kind of newer to my content or you're, you're a little bit lost on like the whole sustainable fat loss stuff. And let's say some of the stuff that we talked about today is totally new to you. You're like, Oh, I thought you should add more. I thought you should just be more aggressive and things like that. I totally get it. So if that's you, I actually have a free course called the fat loss checklist and it is your A to Z guide on how to lose fat sustainably and keep it off and simplify fat loss as a whole for you. So you can enjoy your life while losing weight. It is the best thing ever. I put so much time into this thing and it's a full five day video course. I'll email it right over to you. So if you haven't gone through it, definitely check that out. The second thing I have for you, if you are feeling kind of alone on this journey, and you're, you're like, I'm my, my, you know, my kids don't care. My best friends doesn't get it. My husband doesn't get it. I'm, I'm just kind of alone. Well, I have a really dope free Facebook group called fat loss simplified. And there's almost at the time of recording this, there's almost 10,000 other people in this group where I put a lot of content in around this stuff. I do challenges. I do all sorts of cool stuff in that group and it's completely for free. And it is nothing but other people like you on this journey. Cause we all know if you're probably in a dozen other Facebook groups, I bet you're not in one like this though. Cause the truth is, um, um, most of these Facebook groups are the blind leading the blind, or they're just like disordered eating disguised with a cool, with a cool sticker. Um, but I run mine very differently. I've been running it for years because I wanted a safe place for anyone to go to, to get loved on, to get supported and to get the help that they need and the information that's going to actually change their life. Um, but I wanted to make it where anyone can access it for free. Okay. Last thing I have for you is let's say you're like, I could use a little bit more support. I don't want to just join a Facebook group. I don't want to have to figure this shit out on my own anymore. And I'm just so tired of the struggle. And I am at that point where I'm so frustrated. I just want this to be over. Well, that's where you're at. That may be one of those things where coaching would be a better fit for you because the beautiful thing is all these things that I teach on the podcast, um, I actually do on a one-on-one -on -one basis in coaching. I even have a group coaching program that we could talk about as well. I'll leave the li some links below for all that because if it, it may be one of those things for you where one-on-one -on -one may be a better fit or getting a little bit more tailored help is going to help you more. That way you don't have to figure this stuff out anymore and play trial and error and everything like that. So if that's more your cup of tea and you are just wanting to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, what to start, what to stop. So we can guarantee that this works for you. That is a coaching conversation. So if you would like to see if you're a good fit or if you qualify and if this would be a good fit and all the details, there'll be a link below. You can schedule a call. That way we can chat and see if what's a good fit. Otherwise, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much once again. I love you and I will talk to you next week.